Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Ozzy here. Welcome to the More Than a Pretty Face podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Ozzy, your host for the More Than a Pretty Face podcast. I am here today with Nurse Lacey, my co-host. Hi. How are you, Lacey? I'm doing good. How are you? I have to admit, I'm struggling a little bit this morning. You do it so well. (laughs) You know, I would say most of the time I'm on, but today I have not finished my coffee, so (laughs) it's going to be interesting. We're just going to wing this one. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Let's get into the beauty and blemish, guys. This is where we share the most beautiful parts of our life and the not-so-pretty blemishes. Do you have a good one or should I go first? What do you think? I think that I have a great one because I saved the day. Yeah? Yes. So tell me about that. I had a patient. We Mm -hmm. did filler on her the day before Mm -hmm. and she called the next morning. She's like, I have such bad bruising. I had already gone over like all the post care, all the expectations, but you know, it's a lot, especially for your first time ever getting lip filler. You don't remember it all. You don't remember to refer back to the brochure I give you the post care, but it's fine. I saved the day. She called. She's freaking out with bruising. I brought her into the office. I had the girls do a laser to break down the bruising. Yes, I got her the enhanced serum with Arnica and she's super happy. We went over all of the stuff. It actually works really well. The laser for the bruising. Mm -hmm. Well, lips almost always bruise. Yes. I mean, not terrible. I saw her. She didn't look terrible, but I think it was her first time. It was. And she just... Normally when I do fillers, like the eyelids, for example, are high risk for bruising because it's so thin Mm -hmm. and the lips are so vascular and we do this micro droplet technique so it looks the most natural. But I love the V-beam laser to use. You have to do it now within 24 hours. Of the bruise, but like, let's say you have an event or something and you have a bruise on like Wednesday, then you really want to come in right away. We do the laser. We can do it a couple of days in a row and it's gone. It cuts the time down. I would say by half. Would you say? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But she was the cutest. She's like, did she ice? I feel like people don't. (laughs) She did ice, ice. but you know, she didn't prepare like she should have for her Mm. treatment. So she went out with her girlfriends drinking, you know, two days before. She took ibuprofen when she, she did like everything I advised against. Yes. <laughs> but I get it. She was just super excited to come in and see you, get her lips done for the first yes. time. Have, so. have you heard that sound that was trending a while back that was like, gorgeous, gorgeous girls yes. have all these bruises. <laughs> they have no idea where they come from. <laughs> have you heard that sound? I heard it's the really gorgeous, funny gorgeous sound. girls, and but I love that. <laughs> so let's talk about bruising because it's a problem. The thing about bruising, especially if you get on your legs, we see this a lot with soccer players. It can actually induce those little spider veins over time. It can cause discoloration. And on the legs, it could last for months. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that make you more prone to bruising? One is blood thinning ingredients such as alcohol. (laughs) So if you're out at the club or you're out with your girlfriends and you guys are having some cocktails, Mm -hmm. well, guess what? Alcohol thins the blood, makes you more prone to bruising. And sometimes you may not realize just bumping into things that's a little bit of trauma, then the blood leaks much more easily when you are taking, for example, ibuprofen Mm -hmm. for that headache you may have had, you know, earlier or the joint pain you may have had (laughs) if you're a little older (laughs) (laughs) and things like fish oil, omega-3, things like vitamin E, which is in a lot of multivitamins. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize, but really you'd have to stop your ibuprofen, fish oil, vitamin E, like two weeks before your appointment because it takes about that long for the effects to wear off on the platelets because that's what happens. It affects the platelets and how they're able to form a clot so that you don't keep bleeding. Alcohol, you want to abstain from that about three to five days before your appointment. Now, some of the plastic surgeons that do bigger surgeries will have you abstain like a week before because that is a big one. Yeah. I usually just say, be safe two weeks for everything. (laughs) Yeah. That makes it easier, you know, and you also give your body a break from alcohol as well. But we see this in people, like for example, when we're doing Mohs surgery and somebody just, their blood is 
so thin. Keeps bleeding You're and like, bleeding. Did you, did you have some wine last night? You know, I guess that's why they say it's good for your heart, yes. but bad for your skin <laughs> because you are less likely to form clots and so forth. And then other things, don't underestimate icing mm -hmm. before and after. Yes. And then also let's talk about Arnica yes. and some of the supplements mm -hmm. that you can take. I usually have patients start them a few days before. And we also have a bruise serum that's by Elastin. That's wonderful. It's the best. And it also has vitamin K and Arnica that helps with reducing inflammation, swelling, bruising, and pain. There was a 2016 study that actually showed those are the three points that they see the most benefit for Arnica, both applied topically and taken as, a, as an oral supplement. Mm -hmm. So if you start at the day or two before, you can continue for five days after. It really makes a difference. Yeah, it does. And you know what my favorite thing telling patients that everyone's always shocked about mm -hmm. is eating fresh pineapple. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for reminding yes. me. I love that. <laughs> and the reason pineapple, and people say, do I put on my skin? I'm like, no, 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 no you no, eat no. it. <laughs> you want to eat the pineapples because it has bromelain in yes. it, which is an enzyme that helps your body heal faster and helps with, again, reducing inflammation. Yes. So those are our little tricks. Yeah. yeah. And always, you know, there's always makeup. Always makeup. Yeah. <laughs> so Total. my blemish. Uh-huh. Okay, we were at the park this weekend. Yeah. And with it being, you know, summertime, Remy saw her first snail. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of them. We've had so They're much rain. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And she found it because she accidentally stepped on it. Oh. <laughs> so sorry, snail. <laughs> but it was just so slimy and so gross. And she was like, ew, mommy. Well, and did you say, honey, just take that and put some on your and skin. That's, <laughs> that's what made me. I'm like, people actually put this on their skin. That's right. It's in so much skincare. And I'm just like. Snail mucin yeah. is a hot beauty trend right now. I just don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a like sticky why? situation, you know. It's a sticky <laughs> situation. It's honestly better than the bodily fluids oh, beauty trend. that we've talked in the past. Yes. Yeah, so well, agree. I don't know. Which is worse? I don't know. I don't you guys, know. we're going to do a poll. <laughs> snail mucin or bodily fluids oh, yeah. for beauty. <laughs> so snail mucin actually started back. It's a Korean beauty trend, mm -hmm. thanks to Korean beauty. But it actually started in Chile. Oh. In the early 1980s, these Chilean snail breeders, because snail, escargot, you know, people yeah. have that as a delicacy, but they noticed their hands were much more youthful than the rest of their body. And they attributed that to the snail mucin, which has hyaluronic acid, it has glycoproteins, and it actually also has glycolic acid, which is one of my favorite ingredients. Mm -hmm. And glycolic acid is great for anti-aging. It helps with fine lines and helps with you know, removing the dead skin from the outer layer. And then hyaluronic acid and glycoproteins, those are vital structures in the skin that help hydrate the skin. They help with firming the skin. Snail mucin is actually rich in a lot of these things. And recently, mm -hmm. studies have shown that it also has zinc and allantoin, which is great at reducing inflammation and healing the skin. It's a new ingredient. It's not like retinoids where we have decades and decades of really good studies behind it, but there's a lot of promise there. Yeah, I suppose if Remy wanted a snail farm, then it would be one way to get youthful hands. That's right. I had a snail farm. I don't farm. think I would put it on my face. Did but you have a snail farm when you were a kid? No, I just played outside. I a had a snail farm. <laughs> I did. I had a snail farm and we had like How have I never Why are you this laughing? You? Why is this <laughs> Why is this so shocking to because people? <laughs> I guess I just I would have never pictured you to have a snail farm. <laughs> well, your hands are youthful. Oh, yeah, they are. Wow. <laughs> Well, how about you? What's your beauty and blemish? I think I was meant to be a dermatologist you because were. I studied in the dungeon of the medical school library. So With I had no sign. And I had a snail farm. Yeah. It was but no, it was very elaborate. Growing up, I always had these projects. Like I would either be building fountains and like with waterfalls or like 
I would like breed, not not breed snails, but <laughs> I, I would like, have wow. snails, and I guess they would breed, you know. <laughs> so what were you we talking about? <laughs> Wait, you were we building went off on fountains. A tangent. Yeah, I, I did all these projects. Well, Nothing has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has changed. changed. <laughs> Nothing. My personality <laughs> is very predictable. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is your beauty and blemish? Okay. So, <laughs> well, I got contacted by this major skincare company uh-huh. to do this campaign for them. And they want to test their products in extreme wind and oh, extreme heat. Interesting. Yeah. So, they want me to do hot yoga. In the desert, oh. like 120 oh. degrees. Okay. And skydive. <gasps> Stop. Yes. Are you going to skydive? portion. <gasps> I'm thinking about it. Oh, you have to. Uh, you ha- have you so, ever done it? No, I've never done it. I have a major oh, fear oh of gosh. heights. Like you go to these hotels, like top floor. I can't even like. No. I get a little anxiety looking over. So I thought, okay, this is going to be great. I'm going to conquer my fear of heights. <laughs> yes. I'm going to do it. So I called my friend and my first friend, and she was like, no way. I would <laughs> never do that. Did you know that there was this 20-year-old kid that died? That- oh. So I was like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm not going to let – I looked at the yeah. statistics. You're actually more likely to get killed like crossing the street yep. or in a car accident or struck by or struck lightning. Struck by lightning, yes. You know? So I was like, that's just, she's just fearful. Yeah. So then I call my other friend and I, I'm going back and forth because I have kids, I have a family. <laughs> yeah, I'm not true. like 25. And yes, it would be a good experience and there's a lot of monetary gains. And I do believe in the product, like I believe in the company. The, all the right reasons are there, but there are also some things that are... Yeah. I decided not to do it. Oh. But do you know what made you decide not to do it? So then I called my most wise friend. (laughs) This friend is just so logical and just always puts things just in the right perspective. Mm -hmm. You know that one friend that you call? And she was like, what? Are you crazy? (laughs) Can you imagine your face on a campaign? (laughs) I would never do that. I can't even look at my photos. I look hideous. My skin is all rippled and this and that. And that was what did it. I was like, it's not the fear of dying, okay? It's the fear (laughs) of bad photos and videos skydiving. I will agree to that. I mean, I have skydived. You don't look your best. No, you don't. No, you don't. And she's like, why would anyone, any beauty campaign... (laughs) Why wouldn't they want you like on a yacht off the coast of Italy? And I was like, I would be there. Yeah. If, if it was a yacht <laughs> off the coast of Italy, I, I would be there. No I, w- I, would, I would sign up for that photo shoot any day. Yeah. It's Aww. a no for me. Well, I was really looking forward to those <laughs> pictures and videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, that was a deal breaker. Aw. <laughs> so was that your beauty and your blemish? Yeah. I think that summed it up. <laughs> But I was ready to conquer my fears. I'm all about conquering my fears. Yes. Like if I'm really afraid of something, I really will put myself in that position to, it's all mind over matter yes. for me. Yeah, Everything is how you approach it, what you think about and mm-hmm. how you view things. So you always have to have that sort of pure mind and be open to everything. Yeah. It's officially summer this month, and to celebrate the rising UV index, Aussie MD Skincare is offering 15% off our most popular sun care product, Hydrotem BB SPF 44. It's my personal favorite. I can't leave home without it. It gives me protection, coverage, and a filter-like appearance. You can use code SPF15 at checkout to get 15% off Hydrotem BB SPF 44. Happy summer. All right. So now it's time for Ask Dr. Ozzy. But before we move on, guys, I want to remind you, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And sharing is caring. Share this with a friend who may also benefit from our topics. It is your listenership and your subscriptionship that really keeps the podcast going. So don't forget to give us a shout out. Follow us on Instagram at more than a pretty face podcast. And if you have questions, I love to 
answer them on the podcast. Yes. So you guys, all questions, lifestyle, beauty, health, we would love to answer your questions. Email us at more than a pretty face podcast at gmail.com. Or again, like she said, you can submit questions, DM us on Instagram at more than a pretty face podcast. All right, let's get into this. Our first question is from Instagram. Susie says, I have not been able to get any results from Botox, Dysport, and just recently tried Daxify. I did about five years ago, and for the last few years, for some reason, my body just flushes it out immediately. It doesn't go into effect. I was hoping to get results with the newest neurotoxin, and after a week, nothing yet. Would you have any suggestions or other options? How can I overcome the resistance of all neurotoxins? This is a great question. So. It's either you have developed antibodies or immunity to Botox, or your muscles are atrophied, meaning they have stopped working. So it doesn't matter if you keep giving yourself Botox, the muscle isn't moving anyway. That's the other scenario. Actually, there's three scenarios. So the third scenario (laughs) is that you're not getting enough dosage, you're Muscles are very powerful, but if you're not seeing any results at all, then most likely the first two, because even with underdosing, you should still have some weakness. So let's backtrack here. So what is Botox or neurotoxins? Neurotoxins are a set of proteins that are injected into the muscle and they relax the muscle. So the muscle can no longer work. And when you can't contract the muscles, particularly in the upper third of the face, you can't crinkle up the skin because this muscle is sits right under the skin. And once the muscle contracts, the skin crinkles and you get the wrinkling. The other way Botox works is we can relax some muscles and allow other muscles to get stronger and work harder. And that allows, for example, to your eyebrows to lift, mm-hmm. for your eyes to appear more open and so forth. It really just depends on your scenario, and this is a good discussion to have with your injector, a really experienced, well-trained injector will be able to work with you on this. I would suggest if it's true immunity, which is very, very, very rare, actually. I was recently at a conference a couple months ago, and there was a meta-analysis that was done, a study that really looked at true resistance to botulinum toxin, which is the protein. And it's extremely rare. If you have that, Dysport or a product like Xeomin should work because it's not the same protein. So if you have antibodies to botulinum toxin, you technically shouldn't have antibodies to these other molecules. But let's say you do have resistance or immunity, then you really need to just abstain from it for six months until those antibodies go away. Because typically they go away. If you do have immunity to it. Now, if it's muscle atrophy, then you really just need to wait until your muscles regain function again. What a lot of people don't realize is when we keep muscles in our face relaxed for a long period of time, we are training them not to work. Mm -hmm. And what happens to muscles when they don't work? If you don't use it, you lose it. You lose it. That's exactly right. It's not any different than any other muscle. So after a while, you might notice. You don't really need Botox. You can go four months, you can go five months, six months, because Mm -hmm. you've been doing Botox for so long that your muscles haven't worked. You haven't raised an eyebrow for (laughs) years. (laughs) So So, would you say it's safe to say like if she looks in the mirror uh and she cannot move or make certain expressions, yeah. that maybe it's not a resistance, but maybe it's just yeah, so, yeah, it doesn't matter if you get Botox, you don't get Botox, the muscle's not moving. The only time Botox really works is if there's muscle movement mm-hmm. and it relaxes the muscle. And you know, a lot of times patients don't realize that one of the analogies we like to use at the office is picture a piece of paper and you crumple it up, crinkle it up, keep doing that and then lay it out flat, 
do it again, repeat that, trying to get all the creases out. But over time, after you keep crinkling that piece of paper, some of those lines are so deep and so etched in that you're not going to see improvement with Botox or any neurotoxin. That's, that's right. when you're going to need some possibly fillers yeah. or lasers. And that's and- a good point because if you're not seeing results because you're not seeing that line go away, mm-hmm. well, maybe because you need fillers mm-hmm. or maybe you need lasers. So that's another scenario. Yeah, that was a great question, Susie. Let's Let's see what our next question is. This is an email and it is anonymous. It's, hi, Dr. Ozzy. Thank you for all of the information you give out. I follow your podcast and highly enjoy it and recommend it to everyone. Oh, thank Thank you. you. (laughs) Not only are you informational, I also appreciate you simplifying medical jargon for us non-MDs. I was wondering if you could talk about the Indian... Tations I get by my nose, I'm assuming here, maybe, when I smile. I am 37-year-old female, and I don't know if I should do Botox or filler. And if I get filler, will I get puffy? Oh, that's a very good question. Great questions. So Botox is really effective if your lines or folds or indentation is caused by a muscle that we can truly relax. If that smiling motion is causing the fold or line that you're concerned about, well, we don't want to keep you from smiling, right? right? So, <laughs> so we talked about what Botox is. So what are fillers? So fillers, you can think of them as implants, really. Mm-hmm. They are gel-like substances made up of mostly hyaluronic acid, and they are injected under the surface of the skin to help lift up, plump, fill in, sculpt, our faces, our lines, and so forth. Now, there are many, many, many different types of fillers on the market, and they all have different properties, Mm -hmm. meaning some of them have more hyaluronic acid molecules linked together, so they're much denser. Some of them are heavier. Some of them are lighter. Some of them are very stretchy. (laughs) Some of them attract a lot of water. Some of them don't attract water at all. (laughs) So I could go on and on and on, but you get the point. They are different (laughs) types of implants, just like, for example, you look at breast implants and you have the gummy ones or you have the saline ones and they have different properties. So we use them for so many different reasons. Now your concern is the smile line. And when you're telling me that this only happens when you smile, that is considered a dynamic line, which can be tricky because dynamic lines work the best when you stop muscle movement, because that's the only time you see the line, right? Well, over time, that line will get deeper and deeper and deeper. So you can use fillers to soften that, but with smiling, we can't, we don't want to keep you from smiling. Yeah. So just know that filler in that area will probably break down rather quickly because you are smiling. And every yep. time fillers are placed under active movements, they're going to go away much faster. But your best bet is just a soft, stretchy, hyaluronic acid filler. The RH density are a good option for areas that are under a lot of motion because they do have the stretchiest filler. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend something like that. Yeah, I think we did that for me a few years ago and yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Great question, you guys. Our next one is from Madeline on Instagram. And she said, Hi, Dr. Shrazi. I'm only 24, but my Middle Eastern skin makes it look like I am so, so tired all the time. I am puffy and desperate for my eye bags to go away. I also have veins around my eyes that make me look puffy as well. And this is a great question that you answer almost every single day in the office. (laughs) It's great. Well, yeah, I mean, puffy eyes, dark circles, there are so, so many causes for them. And really, you should base your treatment off what the underlying cause is. Mm -hmm. Because if it's puffiness and eye bags, then that creates almost like protrusion under the eyes, which then makes a shadow beneath the eye bags, giving you dark circles. But just understand that we're going to be the most puffy in the morning. And a lot of times puffiness can be related to fluid retention, which means that your body has too much salt or too many electrolytes or whatnot, and it's just holding on to water. When you've been sleeping for eight, 10 hours at night, and you're kind of 
head down, then all the water gets trapped because what happens with the eyes, the fluid doesn't have anywhere else to go. So it kind of stops right at the under eye bags. And because that eyelid skin so thin, it just tends to look puffier than anywhere else on our faces. I love it. So one thing you <laughs> can do is whatever. really watch your diet and watch your water intake. You may not be drinking enough water, therefore your salt amount is going up and that hangs on and attracts water, holds on to it. You can try reducing caffeine and alcohol because that dehydrates you. Make Mm -hmm. sure you're drinking a lot of water and obviously watch your salt and your sugar because that can also cause puffiness the next morning. And then in terms of under eye veins, yes, they can cause venous pooling to that area. And the blue veins particularly can look kind of darker. And then the pooling of the blood in that area can certainly make your under eyes worse. There is a laser actually that we can use that selectively removes these eye veins around the eyes. And it's a very popular procedure in my practice. I love doing it. It's a tricky treatment because the eye is involved and you have to be really, really careful. It is a powerful laser and Anytime you're working around the eyes, you need to wear metal eye shields, but there is a laser that gets rid of those veins around the eyes. It's also important to know that sometimes we may not be able to get that vein on that very first try, but we can literally see that vein shrink and close down. And then it takes your body, you know, a few weeks to really get rid of it. But that's an effective treatment. You need to go to somebody who's highly specialized in laser surgery that has experience in this procedure. This is not laser hair removal. This is not something you go to any place and have done because there are a lot of risks, including eye damage. But those are some tips. I usually, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, because I'm Middle Eastern (laughs) and I get the puffiness too, is drink a tall glass of water. Drink it like fast, like just because your body's been without water all night. And that's actually overnight is when we lose a lot of water. So you want to really replenish the water. And then number two is you can use cool compresses because cool Mm -hmm. helps reduce puffiness, inflammation, avoid eye creams and go for eye gels. You can also do a little cucumber soaked in black tea. I was just going to say that. Caffeine, (laughs) caffeine really helps with drying off fluid. I use Iglo PM at night, which has caffeine in it. Mm -hmm. It has Arnica, vitamin K to help with the blood pooling. But Iglo PM, I just use a half a pump for both eyes because I have a little bit of sensitive skin. Right underneath, I use that at night. And then in the morning, I use Iglo AM, which has a metal cooling tip. And guys, you can do this pass from the inner corner of your eye using, I mean, you could also use a cold spoon, (laughs) but if you want to be fancy and use (laughs) Iglo AM, which has a peptide serum that comes out of it, you can use that as a glide, the peptide serum, which Mm -hmm. also has sunscreen in it. Of course. Because I love comprehensive products. So then, yeah, you could do a pass from the inner eye out to the outer eye and just kind of work that fluid off gently using that peptide serum as a glide. Mm -hmm. Again, you can do cucumber soaked in black tea in the morning. Some of my friends just soak their full face in an ice bucket. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's that's one way to do that. That That's a rude awakening, (laughs) but I'm sure it probably helps with de-puffing as well. So I have a question. Yeah. With dark under eyes, Mm -hmm. say she didn't mention the veins. At what point would you consider eye glow rejuvenation for somebody with dark under eyes? So yeah, for those of you who may not know what eye glow is, eye glow is a technique that I patented. It uses a white opaque filler to help lift the under eyes and reduce hollowness and rejuvenate the dark circles that we get. It only works if you have volume loss, meaning there is hollowness under your eyes. And if you've already had filler, you're not a candidate because you need to have volume loss or a place to add that filler. Now, be careful with under eye fillers Mm -hmm. because a lot of times what happens, people go in, they think, oh, it's going to help my puffiness and it's going to help my dark circles. Not always. Only if you have volume loss. That is so important to No, I have an entire YouTube video on iGlow. So if you're interested to hear more about it, you can watch the iGlow YouTube. But essentially, 
if you overdo the fillers around the eyes, because fillers have hyaluronic acid in them and hyaluronic acid attracts water. So it can actually make your under eyes more puffy because of the hyaluronic acid. We just had a patient in the other day and she's young and she's beautiful. And she's like, I look so tired. And she had like blue under her eyes. And I was like, oh, you know, have you ever done under eye filler? Mm -hmm. She said, yeah, I've been going... I get it done like every seven or nine months. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you're in your 20s. I said, let me just have the doctor come we and look see at you real quick. So Poor often, thing. guys, do not get under eye filler just randomly thinking it's going to help improve all types of dark circles. Mm-hmm. It can actually create a blue hue, which is called the Tyndall effect. Yes. And that's the reason the sky is blue is because on a clear day with a clear filler <laughs> under the eye, thin eyelid skin, blue light scatters the most. And yes. so it can actually worsen dark circles. Yes. All right, guys. All right. Thanks for tuning in. This was such a fun episode. It was. You guys are great. Thanks Don't forget, for... guys, to rate, review, and subscribe. And follow us on More Than a Pretty Face podcast on Instagram. We do lots of skincare giveaways. And share this with a friend because yes. sharing is caring. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.